This is my mailbox that happens every year. Towards graduation times, they put a few cherry bombs in it outside and blew. We, well, we saw it in the top of a tree one time up there. We didn't know where it would went. And uh, we brought it down, and I thought it was such a wonderful shape that I made a sculpture out of it. No mail in it. And uh, this is the way it was blown up by cherry bombs into the tree. And, uh, so that's real found object. I didn't have to do anything with it. You had to write up something about yourself and what you, why you did your work. And, and I used it in this catalog, I always do. And I'm reading it off this because I can't remember it. But before we relegate our hands to being appendages of the computer, remember that there is nothing in the world of technology as miraculous as the ability of the mind to direct a hand to express ideas. And I've always followed that. This was an old box that was around and I added this on it. And there's, this is a broom that was cut up. And this is a bicycle, an old bicycle seat of, of the boys. And this was a laundry pole of my father-in-law in Seacliff. And you're going to ask me what it is. Well, this is something, and this is something, and this is something. And these are little checker players. Here's another uh, found object off the beach. This is part of an air conditioner. These were just pieces I found in the garbage. The thing that is important is that at one point, it strikes you of what you want to say, and then you are pursuing that end of it. You know, you don't have a chance to say halfway through again, oh, I'm going to turn it into this. No, I think it'll be a better that. You make up your mind, and that's what's going to be. Well, behind 80% uh, of the pieces, there's a, as I hate the word message, there's a message. Of the cotton gin that didn't work, which was the first one I did, actually, of the motion type. Said in a way that I have a little humor doing it, you know, could be borderline but, and very rarely is it picked up. Uh, and I, I feel that also it visually has to be just as good as you would if it were you painting a sunset or something like that. You want me to fall down the stairs? We ran out of space on the walls and, and then we didn't wash your head. <laughs> now the ceiling from here to there to halfway back there it's all got things hanging on it. You know, you, you can't be carried away as people, I am at times, carried away by the found object. You say, oh, isn't that great? You know, because that's not the whole point. The found object is a, like your paintbrushes or tubes. It's something you're using as a media to achieve and show what you're trying to do. You go up here and you see, here's, here's what I want. I agree with down. There's no marking found this so-and-so. This used to be a so-and-so. It's a fresh thing. It's a, it's a, a new something that I want. If it came from something else, you're right, everything is transformed in that sense. The shaft comes and has a uh, wire off it that's working hem, and at the same time it's turning this whole thing around here. There's a piece of cowhide here. So one turns the other, and then the other turns another, and then another turns the other. And uh, here's the main uh, gear. expressway one morning commuting to work and this truck turned over and all these crates that were piled up and tied on tumbled out on the expressway and there were all these chickens in it going to the market it was one hell of a mess they were very nice looking pieces I thought for sculpture so I picked them up and I had a wagon I put one of them in the wagon I said I put another one in a wagon a man said oh well that you know you shouldn't be taking those I said why not it's blocking my car and uh, besides I don't think you're gonna get all the chickens back <laughs> This is just so much of the essence of what goes on in Peconic Bay. They've got these great red boats. Everyone knows them when they're out there piled up all winter long, and then they go out in the spring and they catch porgies. I'm 81 now. You know, uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to do it? Are you going to have time to do it? Is this what you want you should be doing? And uh, yes, I think that I got more satisfaction, and I think my wife did too, out of uh, doing uh, sculpture and what I, the way I wanted to do it. If you can look at something and come away with a feeling you've got uh, accomplished part of the purpose of art, which is the third link, you know, you, you create it in your mind and then you're the mechanic, you do the things, and then the third link is the visitor who sees it and reacts to it, you know, and that's, uh, that's, the, it, that's the important thing.
step back, it just looks like a bugle. When you get closer, you can see white paint is creating the reflection mm -hmm. on, on the, the horn and on the handle, mm -hmm. and a piece of the underside and the, the edge. Really, a lot of detail. It's really quite... Wonderful. Quite wonderful. Well, when I met Peter, he talked about the Mets, and I thought he was talking about the Metropolitan Museum of Art or the Metropolitan Opera House. I didn't know that there was a baseball team. <laughs> and he couldn't believe that he was dating someone who was a Yankee fan. But even even then, we were surrounding ourselves with... with even with, if it were a tie-dye, it was orange. Wasn't. I think that a lot of people think that they have to know about art before they enter a museum. You might not be good at math or terribly articulate, but you can look at a piece of work and it doesn't matter. You just need to be open to appreciate or not appreciate what you see on the walls. The only way I know how to respond to art, I mean in general, is almost always it's emotional. Because it's just you and the painting or you and the sculpture. You could live in many other places on Long Island and not have a museum of this quality, this caliber. It has works from the 16th century to the 21st century. It has over, I believe, 2,200 pieces of art. It's very nourishing. It's the same reason we have art on the walls in our home, is nourishment. They're not of one particular type or school. And again, I think it has to do with what struck us, what we like about it, what made us smile. Vicente's way of doing collage is kind of interesting because they're not very obviously pieces of other material uh, laid on each other. But he paints them first, so they appear to me as, uh, as abstract uh, forms. I think that's what I like about it. We struggle with whether or not we're collectors because we do not work hard at it. That was in a gallery window and we kept on passing it. And he's tainted. It's much less uh, of the idea of, well, whose is it and is it going to uh, grow in value or any, anything like that or does it fit into a particular scheme of what the artist is doing. It's much, it's much more to do with how we feel emotionally about it. When you live with them, it adds something more. Like when you reread a book or look at a movie for the second time and the dialogue is better and more full because you're listening for the second time. Uh, same thing with art. Um, what do I like about it? I see this as a dove, which it may or may not be. Um, I love the shapes and I love the colors. Edward G. Robinson was a very fine collector of Impressionist work and he said the most important thing is to have a home that you look forward to going home to and to have art that you look forward to looking at. And I do have the lilies of the valley and, and I sat in the driveway for a couple of days painting these. And I'm sure the neighbors were wondering what I was doing. Andrew was doing these, and a lot of them, uh, and enjoying doing them. And I was building houses. And there were always are, around the job site, scraps of wood of varying shapes and sizes that are only going to be thrown out. And I started bringing them home for her to use as material to paint on. Margie once came into the house and said, well, you must really like this artist. <laughs> and I said, indeed I do. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. That's a true story. This is Peter 
watching a baseball game. I bought self-hardening clay because I knew I could not sit through a World Series. So I sculpted Peter's head. Shall I hold right. it up? He was very serious when he was watching the game. I'll be Those, serious the now, okay. first lips were, <laughs> you know, he was sitting on the edge of his seat. It must have been actually before we were married. It must have been the Mets when yeah. they won 1969. Three, four. It's probably now that I need you the most when I'm one half child and the other ghost and one of them wants to pull you close and the other will let you go. The time's criminal love, hard one and love defies everyone inside my skin. A skeleton is warming up his eyes.